In our last section, we discovered energy quantization. It was established that radiation radiated energy can only be discrete values. We also examined the emission of light energy from atom. In this lesson, still under the same topic, we shall consider what happens when light of very high frequency falls on a metal surface. This phenomenon is known as photoelectric effect. And still, this is still under the quantization of energy. But we are going into a little more to talk about different other scientific view on this same topic. Stick with me as I take it through. Energy quantization part two, of course, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the concept of photoelectric effect, solve problems involving Einstein's photoelectric equation, discuss some x-rays on the following production, characteristics and properties and uses. However, if we don't finish this topic on this lesson, we are going to take it to part three. But let's continue. The concept of photoelectric effect. This is a phenomenon in which electrons are emitted from the metal surface when light of sufficient energy falls on them. Now, light of sufficient energy, when it falls on a metal surface, there is an emission. For example, let's assume this is a metallic surface and light energy falls on them then a kind of radiation is emitted on the process. This kind of effect is called photoelectric effect. And remember that that light must have a particular frequency. And before these electrons or particles are emitted, they also have to gain enough energy before they will be able to break the bond of covalent bond or I mean the electro forces, electromagnetic force that are holding them down, I mean electromotive force holding them down before they'll be able to break the forces within the surface and then for them to leave. In that case, we also have to consider that amount of energy. Now, look at this. The ray from the sun hits them, then emission takes place immediately and this is what we call photoelectric effect and that means the light has a given energy because that energy in this case you can be seen as an absorption according to the balls energy because they have received energy from the sun and they'll be able to transition from one level to another laws of photoelectric effect photo photoelectrons are ejected by a metal surface when the frequency of incident radiation becomes equal or greater than the work function of the matter. You know, I was telling you that um, there is a particular energy level that they will have to get to before they will be able to break that forces holding them together and for them to be emitted. And that comes the idea of work function. That sufficient energy, because when you talk about work function, you're talking about energy. So that energy must be sufficient enough. And look at what they said. He said it must be equal to the work function or greater to the work function. That means there is a particular frequency that can enable them to be able to be emitted. We will get to that and of course it should be called the threshold frequency. Now the number of photoelectrons emitted per second is directly proportional to the intensity of the incident radiation. That means the, the brightness of the light is not our concern. Our, the brightness of the light is not our concern. Our concern is that which is called the intensity of the incident radiation. And remember, intensity has to do with the power or energy per time, and which is that intensity. The maximum energy of photoelectrons do not depend on the intensity of incident ray, but relies on the frequency of the light. And then this knowledge of what you have learned will now take us to what happens when Albert Einstein's then have to put these laws together and harness it better, which is one of the things we are going to explore in this lesson. Now look at this, Albert Einstein's photoelectric equation. This is what he said. He said quantum energy or photo energy is given as HF. We have looked at this already. We said that the energy of the light, it must be equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of the light. Then, 
he also went further to say that there is a particular energy which is called work function and it is given as Planck's constant multiplied by the threshold frequency. This frequency F0 is called threshold frequency. Then he now came up together. Since this is for energy and this is for energy, then he now said that energy must be equal to energy plus another energy. I'm going to differentiate this energy. Remember, the first energy which he called the kinetic energy. Why do we have to, how, how, why does he bring in kinetic energy? Remember that these particles, for them to move, they must gain energy due to movement or energy gained by a body, by a moving body. And that is called the kinetic energy. He said that the total energy that the energy from the sun is going to be given to that metal must be equal to the kinetic energy. And that kinetic energy is equal to this one, this first energy, which is called the work function. It's also energy, the work function. What is the work function? That is the minimum energy required for this to be able to lift whatever is holding it down. And then this energy is the energy from the sun. That is the energy of the light, the light energy hitting the electron in the first place and it is given as HF. So these two combined together is called Albert Einstein's equation. So if you put this beta, remember what is EK? E sub K is given as half MV square. Then work function is also given as HF naught. And this energy from the sun or the energy from, yes, light energy or photon energy, which is photon energy, is given as HF. If we combine all these together in an equation, we are going to have this 1 over 2 mv square is equal to HF naught plus HF. This is the equation according to Albert Einstein. And we are going to use this to go into many of our problems. Now let's look at the first thing which is called the threshold frequency, F sub zero, which is F naught. What is this threshold frequency? The threshold frequency is the, the threshold frequency of light falling on the surface is just sufficient to liberate electrons without giving them additional energy. And this is represented in Hertz. So this is that, um, you know, kind of frequency required. If the energy from the light or the photon energy falling on the metal and does not have a frequency which is equal to its threshold frequency or what we call the benchmark, the lowest score. Let me explain this. It's just like somebody who wants to gain admission. And they said that for you to be able to leave the normal, the place you are now and go to another school, that the lowest mark you need to gain is 280. So until you get 280, you cannot study in that school. So that is called the threshold score or the benchmark. That is the same thing that happens here. The threshold frequency is that lowest frequency that is sufficient to make the electron on the surface of the metal to be ejected. Or to be emitted. All right, let's go to another one. Now we are going to solve the first question. In this case, he said, calculate the energy in joules of ultraviolet light of wavelength three times ten raised to minus seven meter, and Planck's constant is given as six point six times ten raised to minus thirty four joules seconds, and the light is given there. Okay, let's look at this equation and see how we are going to explore it. First, what are we looking for? What we are looking for is energy, E. Then what kind of energy? They now gave us wavelength. Remember this? And they gave us wavelength. And I know that light is C, not the normal velocity they gave you. C, which is equal to, um, that is um, frequency multiplied by lambda, which is the light in quantum physics. Therefore, I'm going to say that F is equal to C 
all over lambda. So if I substitute this in here, I have that the energy we are looking for is hc all over lambda. And in this case, h is given to me as 6.6 .6 times 10 raised to the power minus 34 times c is given to me as 3 times 10 raised to the power 8 and lambda is given to me there as as 3 times 10 raised to the power minus 7. So the energy we are calculating is this. I'm going to have this multiply this. But then, since they are multiplying, I will cancel this and cancel this. So I have 6.6 .6 times 10 raised to the power. This is minus 34 plus 8 plus 7. And this is just going to be 15 and which is 19 minus 19. So E is going to be 6.6 .6 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 joules. So this is the energy in joules of ultraviolet light of wavelength 3.3 times 10 raised to the power minus 7 in that order. Now, the next question, they said compute the frequency of photon whose energy is required to eject a surface electron with this kinetic energy is given as 3.5 times 10 raised to the power minus 16 eV if the work function of the metal is 3 times 10 raised to the power minus 16 eV and we are given what 1 eV is. All right, but before we go further, remember this. According to Albert Einstein, we say that kinetic energy is equal to work function plus the energy or energy of the light or photon energy or let me call it EP, not potential energy photon of the light, is photon. This is what Albert Einstein stated. Now, this is going to be half mv square is equal to half f naught plus hf. However, what I'm looking for is the frequency required. So, but they gave me everything here. E, EK was given to me, and it is given as 3.5 times 10 raised to the power minus 16 EV. So I have this already. Then the next thing I was given a work function, W sub naught is given as 3 times 10 raised to the power minus 16 EV. And then I do not have this. So to get this, I'm going to have this. This, which is E of the photon, photon energy is equal to um, kinetic energy minus the work function. Kinetic energy is 3.5 times 10 raised to the power minus 16. Then minus the work function, which is 3 times 10 raised to the power minus 16, all in EV. And then energy of the photon is equal to 3.5 minus 3 is 0 0.5 then times 10 raised to the power minus 16 ev all right this is the energy of the photon but remember we know that we know that the energy of the photon is equal to hf and from there we can find our frequency but i have to find what this ev is because 1 EV is given as 1.6 times 10 raised to the power minus 19. So I have 0 0.5 times 10 raised to the power minus 16 times 1.6 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 is equal to H, which is the Planck's constant, is 6.6 .6 times 10 raised to the power minus 34. Um, remember, I have to factorize this from this. So what, if I factor out 10 raised to the power minus 6, it comes out of the bracket. So we now have 3.5 minus 3. I have 0 0.5. It is not multiplying. Neither is it dividing. So we don't have anything with this. So I just have to solve it like normal algebra. So in this case, I am going to, this is F. I have to multiply this by F. Now I'm dividing both sides by 6.6 .6 times 10 raised to the power minus 34. 6.6 .6 times 10 raised to the power minus 34. This cancel says, then I'm going to have 0 0.5 multiplied by 
divide by 6.6. Then I will have So I have 0 0.12. So I'm going to continue here. So I have 0 0.12. Now, because they're multiplying, it will now affect the powers. Minus 16 minus 16 is going to be, that is going to be times 10 raised to the power minus 16 minus 19. Then this is minus on the denominator is going up to become plus 34, and this is equal to the F. So 34 minus 16 minus 19 is going to be minus 1. I have 0 0.12 times 10 raised to the power minus 1 is equal to F. This is the same thing as saying 0 0.12 divided by 10 is equal to F. So F is going to be 0 0.012 hertz. So this is the frequency of the photon whose energy is required to eject a surface electron with kinetic energy as given on the equation. All right, so um, next class we'll be talking about X-ray, but for now we are going to end this, but we have to go to exam guide app to look at different questions that are related to this Albert Einstein's equation on quantization energy. Okay, we, there are, you know, remember this quantization, we have done series of um, learning on this quantization, so different parts are here. So I'm going to be choosing the questions that are mostly associated with Albert Einstein's equation. This is fusion. Let's do calculation. Okay, look at this one. It said a matter with a work function of 3 EV is radiated with ultraviolet light of energy this, the kinetic energy of ejection electron is. All right. So in this case, we have work function. Remember that kinetic energy is equal to work function plus photon energy. This is Albert Einstein. I have to emphasize this, Albert Einstein, for you to know that this equation is for Albert Einstein. So the work function is 3.0. So this is 3.0 EV plus Then the energy of the light, or which is light energy, is 4.0. So this is 4.0 EV. So kinetic energy is going to be 7 EV. We are stopping there, and the option there is B.